Hello everyone, welcome to TechTrade.com and welcome to this course on Operating Systems. In this course, we will be following these chapters and to start with, we will be starting with introduction of operating systems and various terms related to operating system. So, first of all, we will be covering introduction where we will understand what is operating system, what it actually does and what are the uses of operating system. Following that, we will be covering process management. So when a program executes or executing program is called process. So in a multi-process system, we have multiple processes executing together, okay, which gives us an illusion of parallelism. So why I'm saying illusion is you have only one processor on which all the processes are executing, okay, and you feel like that these are executing parallelly. Right? but they are not actually executing parallelly what happens is once a process let's say p1 is executing this p2 will not be executing at that time okay but at a sudden or at a certain event or due to some reason which we will understand this process p1 holds its execution okay saves its record okay and then process p2 starts executing Okay, so at a time only one process is executing over this processor, but this switching is so fast that you realize that multiple processes are executing together. <coughs> so this, when multiple processes are there, we will uh, understand this managing these processes under this section which is process management under which first we will understand what are the basic concepts that is what are the various status of process and from one status to other status how it moves so that is transition diagram okay. then we will understand scheduling as i mentioned there is only one processor okay and multiple processes are executing so we need to have a scheduling algorithm which will schedule that which process will be selected for executing over this processor okay so that we will understand under this scheduling section and we will understand threads okay which works like a process but which are not actually process okay so and we will uh, under understand various advantages of this threads and uh, what are the differences between threads and processes right and as i said multiple processes we have then we need to synchronize the execution of this process Okay, normally there won't be any problem, but let's assume there are two processes, this P1 and this P2, and both the processes are using a resource, which is R1. Okay, so when I'm saying using resource R1, it means that these processes are maybe reading or writing this resource. Okay, so usually reading doesn't create any problem, but when you have writing with this uh, writing involved then it can create a problem which is like it can create inconsistency both the process are writing and that that in that case this we need to have a synchronization mechanism which will ensure that everything is going correct right so under this we will understand uh, these uh, critical section thing uh, semaphore and uh, various solutions of uh, this process synchronization now there comes deadlock. So when I'm saying a single resource can be used by multiple processes, now if multiple processes makes a chain of waiting, let's say process P1 is waiting for process P2 to release a resource and P2 is waiting for P1 to release another resource, okay? But as we have synchronization algorithm, it's not creating problem, P1 is waiting when P2 is using, let's say using a resource R1, and uh, this is R1 and this is also using a resource R2, right? Now, now both are waiting for other to release the resource, but they are not quitting. In that case, there is a chain of infinite waiting, right? Which is called deadlock. So this, this we understand under, under this section, we will also study what are the different uh, deadlock resolution mechanism, okay? And what are the various uh, measures which we can take to avoid deadlock okay now 
Under memory management section, we will understand how we can efficiently use memory. You have a main memory, okay? And then you have this larger hard disk, right? But everything which is executing has to be here, right? So how efficiently we can manage this memory so that we can utilize, you can, we can get maximum utilization of this memory because this memory is costlier. We cannot have a larger main, main memory, right? So that's why we have to have a memory management mechanism, right? And there will also be a case, uh, I'll give you another example. So let's say uh, uh, if we go a few years back, we used to have uh, main memories in MBs. So let's say you have 128 MB of memory and you want to execute a, a software that is, let's say, Photoshop. And Photoshop is having 500 MB of size. Then how we will be able to execute this such a large software on this small memory? So there comes the concept of virtual memory, okay, where we will only load those pages of this software which is recently required right so these things we will understand under this me memory management section and finally it comes to file systems and disk management so if we consider this disk management uh, under this disk management thing so as i said this is hard disk right and uh, right now we have ssd which is uh, which is solid state drive but uh, most of the systems still having hard disk which is uh, because ssd is very costly so hard disk has a disk okay and this disk is very similar to our uh, cd or dvd and we have this this is a disk okay and we have a read write head which reads or write from this disk and we have various tracks where data are written right so now at a time, if we have multiple requests, let's say some data has to be uh, let's say we have multiple requests, some data has to be read from here, another request is from here, another is from here, okay, multiple requests. Now, under this circumstances, where we have multiple requests of read write, then how the disk is going to be scheduled, how this head will move. So these things we will understand under this disk scheduling and then file system, which is a very important part of operating system. So every operating system has its own way of storing and retrieving information in the file. Now, uh, I'll give you a better example. If you remember or uh, most of you have already installed two OS in your system. What do you do? You create different partitions okay and you install linux okay and you also have windows uh, windows right now if you are on linux if you are on linux you will be able to read write files of windows right because linux supports ntfs right but if you are on this windows machine right and you want to read something for from this Linux partition, you won't be able to do this, right? Because Linux has this ext file format, ext file format, which is not supported by this Windows, right? So this is the problem because we have different file systems, different storing mechanisms for different, different operating systems, right? So we will be understanding these things in more depth in file system, right? So this is the whole curriculum of this course. Uh, now, during this course, I would refer you two important books. So the first one, I would recommend you to have Galvin, which you, uh, I assume most of you already have. Okay, and if you want to uh, learn more practical and you know implementation approach, then you can buy another book which is D M. Oh, this is Damdare. D M Damdare, right? So these are the two authors. Uh, book may be uh, uh, titled as Operating System Concepts or like this. So uh, it is famous by the name of author itself, right? 
and before i end this uh, introduction session i would like to i would like to dedicate this course to two of my teachers so from whom uh, i learned most of the system concepts so one is so khalil rahman sir uh, probably uh, khalil ur rahman sir rahman khan sir and uh, my professor from iit kharagpur uh, dr professor rajib ma so i am very much thankful uh, to learn from them thank you sir if you are watching this video well so uh, thank you for watching this video i am really very much excited to guide you through this course and i hope you will be enjoying learning with me so before i finish i would really like to request you to share this video on social media and with your friends who really need these kind of uh, courses in uh, their college curriculum or if they are preparing for some kind of exam uh, and make sure you are subscribed to our channel for continuous update so see you in the next lecture of this exciting course which is from introduction of operating system thanks for watching